about teamwork. Tim is lighthearted, comedic presentation. We'll talk about the Cubs, Trump, Lady Luck, and teamwork. From Speech 10, the basic manual, inspire your audience. All right. Good, afternoon. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. As soon as we get our Source, or else you wouldn't see it. Okay. Back on. Okay. Just need to pull out. There you go. All right. Teamwork, Cubs, and of course, Lady Luck. And a quick premise on teamwork. <clears throat> How many of you know that the Chicago Cubs won the World Series? <laughs> You know, the thing is, our Cubs did it. It was after a 108-year dry spell. And I don't know if they deserved it, but there was a lot of teamwork involved. All started off with this, a book called Michael Lewis and Moneyball. He wrote this book. He was a night watchman and had a new theory about how to look at old things and how to get success. He brought that book and took on the off chance by going in 2006 to the Boston Red Sox and eventually getting them into a World Series. He was hired by a guy by the name of Theo Epstein and brought some success to the Red Sox. I remember that game real well because my best friend was getting married in Boston at the time. His name was Chris. There was a lot of signs that said, Cowboy Up, but I'm not a sports fan and I'm taking this tour of Nathaniel Hall, which is a big architecture area and place where they signed the Declaration of Independence and did all kinds of the nation's business. She asks, any questions at the end? Yeah, what's cowboy up mean? <laughs> well, she told me it's for a Texas player that was doing really well with their World Series team, but I didn't really have no idea. But that was a direct result of Michael Lewis and what he did. Well, with us, we had a new investor, a guy by the name of Tom Ricketts, worked with Ameritrade, brought and bought a 95% stake in this little profitable baseball franchise on the north side of the city called the Chicago Cubs. He then starts assembling the team together. He gets a philosophy. He gets to try to de-stress his players down. And he hires a guy by the name of Theo Epstein to help out bring the team up and eventually get a World <laughs> Series victory. Theo's a classic character. We know he's going to be successful because, now get this, this is another legend. The Beatles manager, when he became really successful, also had the same last name as Epstein. <laughs> <laughs> well, we all know what happened after Theo was hired and after the principles of our gentleman who wrote the book came into place. They won the World Series. 109 years after a deficit. Come on, folks. The Cubs won the World <laughs> Series. Whoa. Yeah. 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 <laughs> but, like anything else in life, Lady Luck always demands a price. <laughs> For some of you, the price may be a bonus. For some of you, this may be the biggest disaster. Lady Luck has been residing too long, far long on the south side. The White Sox victory, the Bulls victory, the Blackhawks, and of course the President. 
Well, finally, she comes to the north side, gives us our victory, but what does she do in return? We get... <laughs> He's our new president-elect. And boy, was I shocked. I personally voted for Gary Johnson, a libertarian, and I was proud to cast my vote. But Trump is our new president-elect. He's going to have to build a new team, and he also has his hire of Mark Pence, a rather successful governor from Indiana who's kind of, in some circles, brought the state fiscally under control. He's a political insider, like Trump is an outsider, and he's starting to assemble his team. Other hires. Reese Previous, tapping the Republican Party chairman. Now, how much more inside can you get than that? And of course, oh, yeah. Steve Bannon, notice the resemblance. <laughs> <laughs> His philosophy, he too, has his books that he goes by, namely The Wealth of Nations by Adam Smith. Of course, his own book, <laughs> Donald Trump, The Art of the Deal. And what I like to call Trump, he's the classic Phineas T. Barnum, hmm. the colonel. Hmm. Trump, and his characteristics, works a lot like P.T. Barnum. P.T. Barnum had a good circus, but he was also known as a Big flim flam man. We go, he's get, just getting started. But a lot of times, <clears throat> look at Ronald Reagan, who was an actor in Hollywood. Yes, he had a lot of training in politics because of his because of his democratic association with the Screen Actors Guild for 30 years. Yes, Reagan also had had done what they call the GE Capital Lecture Series for almost 30 years where he de described capitalism and what it could do. Trump, too, has had a number of things. He's gone and he's made a successful company. He's gone bankrupt. He's gotten a successful company. He's also had a few people stymied in bankruptcy. And according to a certain book that was released recently, Trump is not the best known for his vendors, but he's starting to get some people around him. So we got to give this guy a little bit of a chance. He's just getting started with his team. And you know, we can do this. I mean, sometimes a new president needs to be cut a little slack. I mean, our country, we woke up in the morning after the election, the sun rose, and I'm myself, I'm somewhat of a Republican, but they never had a chance to really do what they want to do. We, we've had a democratic administration for a while. The economy's rising. But now they've got control of Congress and the House and the presidency. Are we going, if they reach out across the aisle, maybe perhaps we can stop this gridlock. Maybe perhaps we can do this ourselves. How does this apply to you? And Toastmasters, you know you can do this too. You can get involved in teamwork. You can learn a lot about what Trump and our political executives have learned. How? You become involved in district leadership. The lessons learned will not only help Toastmasters and the organization grow, but it'll also help yourself. <clears throat> and right now, I'm sure Joan can attribute to it. I'm sure Bruce Burrow, who was a former district governor, can attribute to it. Many of you have had other lessons of district leadership. I know you're doing the youth, I'm forgetting your name, but I know you're doing the Toastmasters youth thing. And I'm sure all of you have gleaned some real leadership lessons by stepping up and volunteering. Yes, maybe this is a little sacrilegious right now, but I think even Trump can do this. It's time to play ball. It's the bottom of the first inning. And it's a new political season. And perhaps if he listens, <clears throat> we just might have a good presidency. But wait, there's more. Come join me at the College of Complexes on Saturday, January 14th, for a presentation given by me and Paul Racino 
on what Trump needs to do to be a good president. This is just a skeleton of what will be presented. Yes, even I, like Trump, who just settled up at Trump University, are giving you a little bit more and asking you to cough up into Chicago with the three bucks tuition to come see me on January 14th. Is it worth it? <laughs> P.T. Barnum said it well. There's a sucker born every minute, or every crowd has a silver lining. <laughs> Mr. Toastmaster. <laughs> Great.